It's good, brother, to have this time where we could all labor together and then come and share what we we have, you know, with this, the table in the wilderness, the uh, refreshing waters renewal. A lot of times we'll talk about the same things, but it's not the same. It's different things, but we get to share and come together. Nikki and I um, talked about some things, and we're like, are you going to use that? That was really good. <laughs> because it's good that we could do this. I mean, the body coming together, working together. I mean, do you think it's going to be different when we get to glory? Where, are we, you think we're going to have, uh, okay, the man over here and the, the boys over here and the, the, girl, the little girls over here and the military people. No, we're a body of Christ. When we get to heaven, we're going to be working together now. We're just preparing. We're preparing now to be doing what we're going to be doing, glory for eternity. All working together and being part of the, a body. Of Christ. You're a part of it. You've given something. We all have the light. The Lord shines light. But he gives Brother Bob something and Brother Ricky and bro, Brother Michael and Brother Given. And some of us, he may give us more. But some of us, you know, we all come together. I, I, I just, that's not even part of my sermon, but I love it. <clears throat> Ephesians 5.14. Wherefore he saith... Wherefore, is because we just got done this whole chapter, he's he's got done talking about how we ought to be and and how um, darkness is and what's going on, and then he says, "Wherefore, he saith, awake, thou that sleepest." And Sister Nikki, she touched on this. What productivity is in sleeping? I mean, what do you get done in sleeping? I mean, you rest because the body needs to rest, but what do you get done? Sister Judas talked about this before, and I so much agree with her about, I can't wait till I get to glory, when because sometimes I want to get some things done, but it's like, well, I got to sleep. Yeah. Or, you know, you may even wake up the way we live now. We may even wake up and go to get some, some, something done, and you start getting tired again. It's just a hindrance. Yeah. But it, this is what the Lord's telling us, to, to be alert now. Mm-hmm. Now, you're in, a, you're in a dangerous time. This is danger. Some people don't even know we're in danger. They they don't even understand. We are in danger. Well, awake. Be alert to your surroundings. There's people that walk around all the time and they they just don't even have a clue. The darkness is hovering and and ready to take advantage of their, 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 because they're not, they're walking in darkness and darkness is wanting to take advantage of that. Take advantage of what we talked about earlier, ignorance. Ignorance is not bliss. It's a a liability. Mm -hmm. Understanding. This, this is, brethren, is good to have understanding. Everybody knows this in every field. Mm -hmm. But why why do uh, believers and people that um, claim to be believers think it's okay that everywhere you go and everything you do, you want to have understanding? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to living your life, and preparing to, for glory. Why would that be acceptable to have no understanding? Amen. To walk awake around clueless about what's going on. Amen. I just talked to, I was telling Brother Given, I just talked to a man that uh, we work with. Uh, he texted me, he asked me a question about the Bible. And um, I'm not going to go into what he was asking me about, but it's something that's uh, largely accepted. And I tried to uh, get his mind off of this by saying, um, give him some other scriptures. And he says, well, what about this? And he was just going all over the board. And I says, where did you find that in the scripture? That's why I texted him back. And he came back with, this was his answer. I don't know, but we were talking about a church last Sunday. Well, what, don't you want to know what the Bible says about it before you take a hold of it and embrace it? This is living in darkness. This is the blind leading the blind. Why, why, why is the blind leaving the blind all of a sudden acceptable? You don't want to go into war with a blind man and another blind man behind him. You just, it would be almost comical to watch him go out on the field. What, the, other, the, the people against him would be like, what are they doing? Just shoot him and get him out of the way. Done. We're done with those two. Now let's get on with the war where people are serious. We'll take them out first and then go after the ones who are serious. This is what's happening, brethren. The, those who are ignorant and without understanding, they're taken out first. And those who are serious, be ready because they're coming for you next. Know what you're talking about. Know what's going on. Awake. 
Awake. Awake and arise from the dead. And that Christ, this is all part of my introduction here, and that Christ will give thee light. We need to be have Christ give us light. Amen. You think that this is all the understand even the understanding that you have now. Now I, I've thought about this when uh, when I first became a believer. There are some things that I grabbed a hold of and I was so excited about. And today I see those are simple. That was like, well, I don't even know why I didn't see that before. But I was excited about it because it was something. It was the Lord showed me it was something new. But that was only a beginning. That the Lord shining light on that as a beginning. It was something to grow on and start off with. But you keep on moving on from there. But the reason you do that is because the Lord gives you light. See, without the light, you, you can't have any understanding. The understanding that you have, and that's the point, is understanding. The understanding that you have is because the Lord shine light on it. Sister uh, Nikki brought this up. When you turn on a, a switch in your house and you've got light, especially like Sister Nikki um, brought up in her kitchen, it's to do something, though. Yeah. It's not so she could say, wow, that's a pretty stove, and sit there all day and look at the stove. I'd be really disappointed if I came home and all she did was look at the stove all day. I'd be like, honey, I'm kind of hungry. You're supposed to do something with that stove, not just switch on the light and look at it. But this is what people do. They switch the light on, and they might have the light. They don't do anything with it. We're to be productive. We're not just to sit around and say, oh, that looks nice. We're to do something with it. Because if you don't, it'll be taken away. That light is there to do something. And you have only a short time to get to work. I, this is the way I see it and the way I've seen it through Scripture. If you're not going to do something with it, God will give somebody else the work to do. And, and it will be taken away from you. Whatever understanding that you had, that will be taken away too. You can't sit around and be unproductive. Not for long in the kingdom of God and think that you're going to hold on to what God has given you. You're going to lose it. Yeah. you gotta, you got to go to work. Without Christ, people cannot, they can't see this. This, this light comes from Christ. We see t today how people are in spiritual darkness. Just, walk, just walking around they, like the man I was talking about at work. He's spiritually in darkness. He's, been in, he's, he's known and been around church people his whole life. And spiritually, he is completely unaware of what's going on. Things that, uh, to me and maybe to you, brethren, that you might say, that was just, well, that's so simple to see. That doesn't, that's not what God's doing. To him, he's, he's like thinking that this is very, this is a big thing. And he's grabbing a hold of a lie because he's spiritually in darkness. Righteousness and holiness, is this the goal for those who live in darkness? That's not even on the radar screen. See, when, you're, when you have light, you see that righteousness and holiness, and these are the things that we, had, we, we desire and attain for. But it's because God, God has shown light on it. He's opened our eyes to see this. Instead of looking to God, the creator of all things, they worship the creation. Now, to you who are believers, you say, I know, that doesn't make any sense. Why are they doing this? Why are they worshiping the creation instead of the creator? They're in darkness. They are in darkness. God has given you light to see this. Some things that may be simple, but it's because he's given you the light. Christ has shed light on it for you to see that God created all things. I mean, you, you read the Bible. Everybody has access now in the world. You, we have, we have uh, uh, iPhones and everything else nowadays to have access to the word of God. Why are still people believing a lie? It's because they're living in darkness. It's because the, the light, when the light's shown, they don't see it. You can have light around you. This is what we, this is what um, Sister Nikki also was, we were talking about, is that you can have light all around you, but if you're asleep, you don't know it. See, at my house, I have to get some sleep so I can prepare for work. So 
I put earplugs in and I got a little mask I put on because nobody's sleeping while I'm sleeping. And there's still light, there's still noise. So I gotta shut everything out yeah. so I can go to sleep. Yeah. There's still light. See, those who are living in darkness, Christ will shed, shed light on this situation, but only those who are awake to see the light. Yeah. They're the only ones gonna take advantage of it. If you don't see, if you don't, if you're if your eyes are closed and you're asleep, you're not even gonna see it when you know, Christ sheds light on it. I, I thought about this. When uh after church, I have to go lay down to prepare for Sunday evening and for the next day at work. If I don't, I'm in trouble. Well, the May 22nd, I went and laid down. And I, I thought this went so well with what we're talking about. I was asleep. I was not awake. I was not aware of what was going on. Sister Nikki came up and she said to me, uh, Honey, she wakes me up. She says, uh, Two sound." Sounders went off. Two alarms for the tornado. Sirens have gone off. I had no idea that sirens were going off. We're on siren two. I just heard the other day that the we there was some weather guy who got an award for um, being able to spot this 20 minutes before it happened. I didn't know. I was asleep. I wasn't awake for any of that. Well, Nikki woke me up. Now, I could have said, ah, leave me alone with your storm. It's not a bad storm. Danger was around. Danger was coming. And I, was, I had no idea what was going on. It wasn't until when she told me, no, this is serious. I woke up. So now I'm awake. I went downstairs. Now I went back upstairs to get my, uh, my, my stuff. I'm coming back downstairs, and all of a sudden, the house is shaking, rumbling, and I'm very awake, aware that there's trouble. Now, when the house started to explode, because I was awake, we got to a place, a safe place. Now, the Lord protected us. I thought this was wonderfully to see this with this. Yeah. You wake up first. Yeah. You wake up, and then the Lord shines light. He's not going to help you if you're going to stay asleep. You think you can just go along and, and about your merry business and be asleep and God's going to use you or he's going to give you anything? He's not. He's not going to give you anything. He'll let you sleep. But he's telling us, for the chosen, awake. Now is the time to be alert. Danger is all around you. It's not coming. It's here. It's right now. This is no time to sleep. This is no time to go on your merry way, to make plans for today, for this, for here and now. We're making plans for glory. We're preparing to get to glory. Awake. The possibility that someone can live without looking to the day of Christ's return and still make it, it's not even possible. Now is the time to awake and be ready. When he comes back, he, it's gonna, he's not going to come back like, hey, by the way, about a day or so, I'm coming back. I, 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 I gave you a warning about a day or so ago. You guys ready yet? And that's not how he's coming back. When he's coming back, you're either ready and alert or you're not. You're awake and you're making preparation, you're working, or you're not. Because when he comes, ready now. Amen. Those who aren't ready, sorry. That, you, you had your time to get ready, awake now. Daily, not having the mind of Christ and still be awake is not possible. You're not going to be awake. You're not going to be ready. You're not going to be used by God if you don't have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> All who do not awake will not think about Judgment Day. Or they will think about Judgment Day, but wrong. They'll be used by those who work in darkness and they'll cling on to just about anything. 
But those who have the light, they see judgment day clearly. We see it way the scriptures, they talk, the scriptures talk about judgment day. We're all gonna be there. Everybody's gonna, is everything's gonna be noticed. This is the time that God is gonna be glorified. Why would it be? I don't even like to talk about this, but why would there be two judgment days? <laughs> why? What's the purpose of two judgment days? We've got one judgment. God's going to be glorified. All deeds are going to be made known, good or bad. And today is a day to prepare for that. Amen. So those who live in darkness, they have little care or desire for that. They don't really, they're not even looking for that. They will not see the need for Jesus, but we do. We see now the need for Jesus. We see that he is the light, that everything that we have is because he shined light on it. That's why we could see it and grab a hold of it. Because of him, he's the light. He's the only light. I love, I love that when uh, Brother Gene brought up, it's, it's ironic that the earth and all the plants have no light. But we get our light from the sun. Yeah. Just happened to be called the sun. <laughs> and he's like, Brother Gene's like, I can just see a lawsuit coming for that one too. We, here we can't, we can't call it the sun. Separation from church and state. Right? <laughs> this is how ignorant people are. Yeah. This is how ignorant they are. They, they walk around with their head in the dirt. Not understanding what God is doing, what he's doing through his son, that Jesus Christ is the light. Amen. Without Christ, there is no light. So what do they do? They turn to the world with, for answers, and the world has nothing for them but darkness. It's the son, Jesus Christ, that has the answers. Have you, has anybody ever worked in darkness before? I happen to have a job where I start off in the morning, early enough in the morning that it's dark. Some of the places I go out in the country with my truck is very dark. So we have these lights on my truck to work with. I have six, I was thinking about this, I got six lights on the back of my truck to get work done. And then I've got lights in the front of the truck. So my whole truck is lit up so I could see what I'm doing to be productive. If I didn't have these lights, I wouldn't be able to get anything productive done. I might be out there driving around, but I'll be tearing stuff up and nothing's getting done. See, Christ gives us light to see what we're doing to be productive. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5.2 says, we are told to walk in love. How do you walk in love? If you can't see what you're doing. Yeah. How can you do any type of walking. Mm -hmm. If you can't see. Yeah. It's because Christ gives us light. Mm -hmm. We are told not to be deceived. Well if somebody is in the dark. It's easily deceived. You can deceive them all day long. Yeah. Hey give me a hundred dollars. I'm going to give you a. You know whatever. Mm -hmm. And they just have no clue. They just do. A fool and their money. Soon or departed. You must be alert and awake not to be deceived. We have to see. We have to have understanding. We have to understand what God is doing so that we can be a part of that. Amen. So that we can be a part of that rightly. Yeah. And not just say, yeah, we have this going on all over, brother. People just say, Yes, I'm doing the work of the Lord. And it is, looks so foolish. Just how, They don't even have a clue what they're doing because they're in darkness. Yeah. They don't have the light. And when you don't have the light, you just, you're, all over the, you're all over the place. You don't want to spend a whole lot of time with these people. Get, get away from these type of people. If you spend too much time with people who are ungodly, soon you're not going to be doing and thinking the way God has given you to think. You're not going to see clearly. This, this is what we're talking about. Those who are not in the light, it, it affects those who are on the light. Yeah. 
it does have an effect on us, on those people. Those who are asleep will say, no one's perfect. They'll say stuff like this. No one's perfect. We all are sinners just saved by grace. Why do they say stuff, foolish things like that? They can't see. They can't see that, no. In fact, we are believers in Christ Jesus. We're set free from sin. Amen. And that we are holy and righteous. This is the way we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So why do people say foolish things like that? Because they can't see. When you're awake and you can see by the light, these things are foolishness. Utter foolishness. You see that fornication is not of God. Uncleanliness, covetousness, filthiness, foolishness, foolish talking, jesting, whoremongering, unclean persons, covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Today, people, brethren, say, no, these people do. They do have a part in the kingdom. Not only that, I have even heard some on TV who people have held up in great esteem say, they're just going to lose some of their things. Some things here and some things in, some, some rewards and glory. That's all. That's all. They're not going to, no, nah, that's not what the Lord has shown us here. They have no part in the kingdom of God. And our sister Nikki brought up, God doesn't ask us to be righteous and holy in all of our ways and not give us what we need to do that. He shines a light for us so that we can see. He's not, this is not an unjust God. He's not a God that says, yeah, go out there and, and I want you to do all these things and then leave us in the dark and just laugh at us. No, this is not the way God is. He shines a light on it so we can see. He opens up things so we have to, the, to live this way, you have to be dead to Christ. To live in such a way that you think that everything that God says is wrong and that you're not going to get into the kingdom. And for you to say, no, I don't believe God. I believe so-and-so who's told me that no matter what we do, we're all going to get to, to heaven. We're all going to have a part of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. These are those who are Dead to Christ. This isn't even, they don't, actually, they don't even think about what God wants. Really, the truth is, they don't even care. All, all they can think about is here and now in the world, here and now. They're so dead that salvation is not even part of what they think about. That's dead. The idea that they are in danger isn't even clear. They think that they are safe. I have heard people claiming to be believers say, oh, the Lord's got it taken care of. No, yeah, we're fine. Don't get, really? Then why is he telling us to wake up? Amen. Why is he telling us he's going to give us a light to see? Mm -hmm. Why is he doing this? It's because we're in danger. Mm -hmm. And we've got to be able to see. God is telling his people to wake up, to arise from the dead. Get away from those who are dead. Don't, don't have anything to do with them. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, verse 7 says. Because we were sometimes in darkness, but not anymore. Not anymore. We got the light now. You can't have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness and be used by God. It's not going to happen. We are told to rise from the dead. Light will not do you any good if you're asleep. If you just stay, the light's not going to do you any good. The light is only for those who are awake. Christ will give thee light. God works through those people. Who? Take advantage of the light. Amen. Just as God used Nikki to wake me up that May 22nd, just as he used her, he's going to use those who 
take advantage of the light. Those who are walking around in darkness, he's not going to use them to be productive for the kingdom. It's those who are awake, those who are willing to be a part of what he's doing and be uh, productive with the light. That's who he's going to use. You know, it wasn't until she, uh, Nikki woke me up that I saw d danger. I had no idea that there was any danger. And it, it's not until we now are awake that we know that there's danger all around us. That we have to stay on top of things. That we can't just take everything for granted. That someone who's speaking, just because they say so, they're the believers, just because they say they read the Bible, is what they're saying. Does it, does it, how, does it, come together with what God has said. We are told to walk as children of light. Ephesians 5.8 We can see things for what they really are when we're walking in the light. We can see unfruitful works and have nothing to do with them because light is productive to do that just that thing. It sheds light on things that are unfruitful. We can see it for what it, it really is. It's not just so that we can all see things and, and wonder, just say, oh, that's just so wonderful. It's so that we can get some work done. So that we can understand God and to see what he is doing. Nothing makes sense if you can't see it clearly. But when the light is shining on something and you can see it clear, evil is seen for what it really is. Even if it may look, when in the darkness, it may look not too bad, not too harmless. In the light, it's seen for what it really is. Many are deceived easily because they can't see or do or understand what is in front of them. Right in front of their faces, they can't see it. They think, oh, it's harmless. It's okay. It's no big deal. Why are you getting so uptight? Calm down. No big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah. So we are told to awake. Then Jesus will give us, then he will give us the light. People who don't understand what God is doing will revert to flesh every time. They'll do what's wrong. Every, without exception, every time they're going to be on the wrong side. You look at someone and say, why, why the, every time they're on the wrong side? It's because they're asleep. They're not awake. They're not, they don't have the light before them to show them. They've reverted to that which is not right in the sight of God. Children of light do what is acceptable unto the Lord because they can see the Lord's will. What is the Lord's will? Well, some people, they don't see it. Well, I think the Lord's will for me. No, he's got one will. That's for the body of Christ. Jesus will say to someone who work in darkness, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. Matthew 7, 23. I never knew you. You may have deceived everybody around you. There. But not here on Judgment Day. I never knew you. They did not work and do the will of God. It means nothing, the work that they did. Absolutely nothing to God. So we are to be working, but we need to be able to see what God is doing. And Christ will give us light to see that. Just as Jesus said, he said, my father worketh hitherto I work. John 5, 17. He wasn't doing his own work. He was doing the work that the father had given him because he's seen it. And he's showing us. He's enlightening us on what the work is. I must work the works of him that sent me. We must work the works of him that sent Christ Jesus. Amen. We must be at, at doing his work because when he returns, we want to be found doing the work. Amen. Amen. So the time to work 
and to be enlightened is now, brother. Now is the time. Not tomorrow, not the next day. Now is the time. Thank you, brother.